Hey everyone, I'm Scott. Welcome to another HEB Cooking Connection virtual class. I am, uh, I'm your host, Scott, tonight. We're going to have a, a great menu. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, with me, as always, before we start, is the uh, lovely Charlotte Samuel. Charlotte, be moderating. So hey glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. It's like the circle's not complete if you're not here to, Aww. like, you know, we complete the circle and makes it better. However, we have another friend joining us. So all throughout January, we've had some friends visiting us. We've had our HEB dietitians who are awesome. They're a wealth of knowledge. Have you made your appointment to go see one yet? If you haven't, I haven't. I'm guilty of that as well. I need to. Um, they're awesome. We have, uh, I'm really excited to introduce one of them. We have our, our last dietitian of the uh, January season here of the class is we have Andy. And Andy is, um, she's so smart. She's a doctor and she can take this mint leaf, break it down to the cellular level and then put it all back together. That's how smart she is. And she's gonna be like, yeah, I can do that, right? So I'm excited. So I'm gonna introduce Andy real fast. She's gonna come talk a little bit about um, kind of what we're doing, a little bit overview, and then also talk about the great nutrition services that we offer in store. So Andy, come on up here. I'll trade places with you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Chef Scott. Does that work? Was that too much pressure with the mint? No, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited. Thank you so much. Uh, too kind. But hi, HEB customers. My name is Dr. Andy Lee Gonzalez, and I'm a licensed registered dietitian for HEB. And I'm super excited in being here today with Chef Scott, Chef Charlotte, and sharing my love for nutrition and health. I get to work with a wonderful team of HEB registered dietitians across the, the state, basically, that help customers like you meet their wellness goals. We help make nutrition easy, tasty, and more importantly, fun. Uh, today, and to learn more, you can visit us actually by visiting heb.com slash nutrition if you wanna learn more. As far as today's class, I'm super excited. I'll be joining our HEB chefs to really learn around meal planning. Meal planning is important, especially when you're trying to eat well. It helps reduce stress making time for your family, for your friends. It also helps save you money. And the most important for me as a dietitian is an opportunity to include more wholesome foods like vegetables, sneaking in vegetables. So again, meal planning, organizing is key when we're trying to eat well. And I'm so honored to be here with you all today. Will you tell them real fast, you've got a prop in your left hand. What is, yeah. what is that? I, I really like that model, by the way, that's cool. Yes, yeah, so as registered dietitians at HEB, we really do believe that all food fit meaning that we encourage your plate to be colorful. We do include uh, half of your plate should include fruits and vegetables, one fourth of your plate whole grains, one fourth of your plate including lean proteins. And today's actually one of our recipes today has a really great source of protein. And then also, you know, making sure that we're getting our dairy in there. So we always say if it's a five, then you got it. Uh, we wanna make sure that we include all these food groups to be your best self, protect your health, and then just to give you the energy that you need on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm so excited you're here. I'm excited because I'm going to make outrageous health claims. And <laughs> Charlotte hope probably. and Andy well, are going to help I'll be here to me. help. <laughs> so if anybody has questions, I'll be on the chat. Again, I'm super honored, super excited for this class. We'll be able to help answer any questions that you all might have. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Andy. And please, guys, if you have any questions, type them out in the chat, and we will answer them in real time. Andy, you're the best. The, um, no, uh, Truly, though, like if you haven't made your appointment yet, they what I what I loved and what I think what I learned over the last few classes is having Charlotte when she was up here doing the classes and having the dietitians. So much knowledge and so much goes into what you guys do and like all the, obviously the training. Obviously, you're a doctor, so very uh, very knowledgeable with certain things. What I love is I always think we think dietitians. It's like ah, don't watch me put the butter in here. Like don't watch, but it's you're oh, not. No. Like, it's not. It's not about slapping the food on our hands. It's about meeting where you are. It's about figuring out how to put you on the right path to whatever your goal is. If I want to run a marathon in three no, days, for sure. you got we me. We want to be your wellness be... partner, right? That wellness partner to help you in any wellness journey that you might take. I love it. So that's good. So they, she's going to stick around. She's going to be in the chat. Charlotte will be in the chat. They'll be answering questions. So anything, whether it's like you're newly diagnosed with something, a new health condition, or you just want to get, you know, just improve on what you have or figure out a new lifestyle, whatever it is, they will, she has a wealth of knowledge, they will, they will answer your questions. Um, the menu tonight, what are we gonna do? So it is about using some kind of, some, some meal saving, time saving tips. Um, we're gonna use our, our fan, uh, I'm a big fan of, the, uh, the kitchen table air fryer. If you've not seen these yet, if you've not picked one up, they're awesome. Um, what I really like about it is it's, you'll notice it's sleek design. It has no like buttons or knobs on it. So it's like it's when it's on age. your counter, it's very space age. Yeah. 
So it can like, you can kind of hide it. So if like, if you have like, if you're like a coffee pot person, if you don't have, I have no counter space in my house. So if you have like a coffee pot, which is pretty much all we have and like the KitchenAid mixer, I don't have room for something big, but if there's no knobs or whatever, it becomes like a mystery piece. So if somebody goes, what is that? I'll be like, it's a bread, whatever I'm feeling, I could say it's a bread maker. I could call it, I mean, nobody knows, right? They're not gonna call me on it. Uh, the kitchen table's a dead giveaway, but we're gonna make a uh, menu tonight. So we're gonna do a uh, gremolata stuffed pork tenderloin and that is gonna go in the air fryer and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. It's really simple. And the thing we're gonna add to your culinary tool belt today is gonna be trussing. So I'm gonna show you how to truss a pork tenderloin. So we're gonna use a natural pork tenderloin. So the natural pork tenderloin, obviously a little bit smaller than a regular pork tenderloin. Will you talk a little bit about lean meats? I would wanna say this dish is healthy, but I don't wanna say that because I don't know if it's really healthy. I just feel like it feels healthy. Will you talk a little bit about lean meats and some things besides if you're not a big fan of pork, what could somebody do as far as like, what, what could they sub in? Well, for sure. This, the choice that we're, we have today, actually, pork is tenderloin, so it is going to be lean cut of protein. So, again, a great source. But if we are looking for additional, um, you know, sources or recommendations, um, our dietitians can help. But some other sources, anything that's loin, round, flank, those are going to be leaner cuts of meat. The other thing I like to share about uh, specifically about pork is that it's as lean as chicken, and we often don't think that. So. Yeah. Today's recipe is just a really better for you recipe. It does include that lean source of, pro of protein. And, you know, as far as our dietitians, it would be a plus for us. Yeah, and it's not deep fried, it's air fried. What? Oh. And I think that's fun. So, what is, yeah, what cool, is so right? cool about the air fryer? Uh, well, it uses magic technology. Andy, I'm glad you asked that question. It uses a ma there's a magic inside that heats food rapidly. No, it's like a convection oven, so it's really neat. But it, <laughs> yeah, it it's, heats it's things magic. Really, or did it's I sell magic. you on it? You were like, you were I was like, like is it's it, is it magic. magic. Should I go buy one? Is it magic? Space it's totally age. magic. <laughs> there's a group of wizards we've employed to make these machines. No, it's uh, they're they're really cool. Um, it's it, the thing that's nice about it is that there's a little fan, there's a convection oven, so it speed it speeds the heating of everything really really quickly. Now I'm gonna do. This air fryer comes with so many toys. The big air fryer has like, it's got a rotisserie rack. It's got yes. a basket for frying. What, Charlotte, what do you like to fry in the air fryer? Oh, chicky nuggies. Chicky nuggies, tater tots, french tater fries. Tater tots, tots. Doesn't have to be always fancy, right? It can be the quick like, hey, I want to throw in some, some fries to go on the side of my yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, we're real like, people. They're, they're awesome. Uh, they also come with recipe books that are yes. made by uh, our very own H-E-B chefs, which I'm one of them. We contributed a great recipe book in there that has ways to use yep. all the toys. So we're going to reverse engineer Jeff this Scott, first recipe. Quick, yes, ma'am. If they don't have an air fryer, yes. what's another method that they, if they're kind of following along today and they don't have an air fryer, what can we do? For this, great question, Andy. Uh, for this one, I like to pan roast first to get a nice crisp crust on there, which is what the air fryer is going to provide. And I would finish it in the oven at about 350. The good thing about the natural pork tenderloin, you can see them and they're a lot leaner. Is our sky cam on? Sky cam is working. The, uh, you can see these are much leaner and so it doesn't take very long to do it in the pan. It's gonna take 30 minutes in our air fryer and it would take maybe a little bit longer, maybe 40 to 45 minutes on the stove, just kind of doing it and then finishing in the oven. So um, this is what the trust, trust finished pork looks like. So I'm gonna put that in there because I don't have a finished pork tenderloin. This is live in rehearsal. We trust these, we put them in there. So I'm gonna put one pork tenderloin on the rack. Now, let me show you this real fast. So I'm using the rack feature. So it just has a little, just basically the small sheet pan that it comes with. So you can see that it, the pork tenderloin fits perfectly on this little sheet pan. Now, if you want easier cleanup, I would just wrap this in foil and then it'd be much easier to get to when you go to be done. You just throw the foil away and you're good to go. Um, I'm gonna put it, so if you can see, I'm gonna change our camera here, our camera angle. So you can kind of see there's different slots where the rack is. I like to put it in the lower, I would say the lower third to quarter of the oven because the heating element is on top. And so once it starts to cook, the higher you go, the more crispiness you're gonna get. So I would say, and the recipe says, just kind of keep it in the lower half of the oven. Now, if you wanna cook it faster, to get the crispy, really crispy crust on top. You can start it up higher, but then just move it down low because eventually you will scorch the outside and the inside may be still a little bit raw. Just saying. So I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna turn on all these space age buttons. I'm gonna go to the, you're gonna go to the chicken setting. Wait for it, it's starting. All right, menu. So it has a bunch of stuff. So what does it have on there? It's got the manual setting, fry setting, fish setting, defrost setting, chicken wing setting. There's our chicken, so I'm gonna hit start. Okay. And I'm gonna, that's it. So 30 minutes is gonna take in there. I'm gonna put these guys, because we got hungry people here, right into the oven to get those going as well. So that is that. Now, how did I get to that stage? Good question. I'm gonna put back on my gloves. And I'm gonna make a, so what is a gremolata? So gremolata is a, an Italian, I would say condiment. 
Um, it is so simple and it's so delicious. And if you've never made one, we're gonna make one right now together. It is just three simple ingredients, three-ish ingredients. You have fresh parsley, you have fresh garlic, and a little bit of lemon zest. Now you can add a little bit of lemon juice or a little bit of, I, mean, I add a little olive oil to kind of get it wet just to make the mixture a little bit wet. But it's really a very simple ingredient. And the, the inside of our pork tenderloin, which it's stuffed with, is going to like be completely perfumed with like the lemon, the garlic, all that great herb very flavor. Very clean and fresh. So I've got parsley. I don't know why I like curly parsley better. I have nothing against Italian parsley. I don't know what it is. I think I just like the fact that it's curly and it has more of a like, it's not so flat. Okay, so just, texture, I, it has I just texture there and you go. That's why I like shape. It. <laughs> Everybody's but like, from a thanks Scott, that was super informative. <laughs> either, will, either will work. Either will work. So I've got my, so you see, this is a, most of the pork tenderloins, the ones we used are typically between about a one and a quarter pound to about one and a half. Some of them can be one and like, you know, one and three quarter pounds, but they're typically a little bit smaller. So it works great for the air fryer application. Again, if you go back, if you're making this right now, you don't have an air fryer, don't worry about it. You can totally pan sear this. You can finish it in the oven. It's really easy to do. So here we go. Here's our pork. So we're going to butterfly our pork tenderloin. So what does that mean when I say butterfly? Everybody has a picture of a butterfly in their mind. What's like the butterfly, yep. you know, the wings. It's like so much spread You sort out. of look spread like a out. hawk or an eagle. Just I look then. like a hawk? It was like a majestic eagle. I don't look like a butterfly? No. Well, I, tr I tried to look like a butterfly to give you a sense of what we're actually doing here today. Um, all I'm going to do is instead of cutting it completely in half and cutting it, I'm going to make a deep cut. And I don't know if you can see this up top. Kind of almost all the way through, but not quite. A sharp knife is definitely your friend here. So I'm gonna go kind of just, you're just gonna kind of open it up like a book. Now, just so you know, these pork tenderloins, the, the natural ones definitely are a little bit thinner. And so if you get something like this on there, I don't wanna try and fold this back in. I'm just gonna get rid of this little piece. So um, I have a quick normally, question for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, you don't need to remove the, the silver skin or the, on the outside. I don't, know. Okay. I mean, it, these, are, these are pretty well trimmed just as it, if it bothers you, take it off. But okay. to me, I mean, this'll, this'll just cook down, especially in the air fryer. It'll render out. I want a little bit of fat on there because, again, fat okay. is flavor. There's nothing wrong with fat, right? No. A little bit's Everything okay. Everything in moderation is good. That's right. Don't eat a stick of butter. In moderation, you could. Maybe eat that same <laughs> stick over three days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to kind of spread this out. This is where you can get your aggression out. I'm going to grab a piece of plastic wrap here. So I'm putting in I also want to mention wrap. that tenderloin actually does also meet the American Heart Association heart check mark. So oh. again, when we look at the nutritionals of pork, it's just a really great lean source of protein that we can choose from as well. I like it. So is that, so is that based on like, is that because of the amount of fat in there? Yeah, so, like, it so it typically like, has less than five grams of fat, um, two grams or less of saturated fat, which is just, you know, when we think about heart health, just making sure that we kind of stay within that range and this could it. definitely be a good source. And that's per serving, to, right? Yes. And so, so a serving, serving of pork would be a good serving would be three ounces three ounces i like that so uh i don't have one of these at home we have one here in our test kitchen so i don't expect you to have one of these because to me it's like what do i need this for besides like if you have a water softener you can smash you know like use it as a to kind of free the salt or a rubber hammer but i like to me i'm like i don't i don't use this and i don't have one at home so i don't want to have you guys have to go out and buy a special tool just for that if you have a hammer hammer it but i have this uh handy old this is my well-worn K&T, uh, just a little small copper saute pan. And so I've got a little plastic wrap on here because you want to make sure nothing goes flying everywhere. I don't need to get, you don't need to get this like Milanesa thin. What is the Milanesa? Like that quarter inch thickness of really thinned out piece of meat. You just want it to be thin enough to where it's kind of even enough. You've got an even enough kind of level playing field. So when we add the gremolata, again, the gremolata is not going to be like a heavy stuffing. It's not like, you know, like a chicken cordon bleu with like the ham and the cheese. It's a really light kind of herb stuffing. It's just kind of, again, perfume it when we roll it up. So this is where you get your, uh, if it's been a long day or a hard day, you can get your aggressions out. You don't really need a hammer to do this. You still hear me okay? So a couple of good wax. It feels good to do that. Um, quickly, lie. Scott, we have a question yes. um, from Maricela. She says she could not find a pork um, tenderloin, but she found a pork loin, a two and a half pound pork loin. So yes. would you do the same thing? Would you still butterfly as well? Yes, I would still butterfly. Yeah, you may have to go now because it's a two pound. It's not going to be much bigger than this, but it'll make the surface area may be a little bit bigger. So you may just need to add more gremolata to it if you need to. Um, I have some pre-made gremolata, which I'll, I'll use, but I'm also going to set this aside because I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make the actual gremolata. So this is it. I got my bowl. I got my fresh 
parsley here. I like to roll. So you see the technique I use because it's all gathered up. I hate trying to like separate it and do whatever. I don't mind the little stems. I'm going to chop it well enough to where, to me, it doesn't really bother me. If it does bother you, you can always just take the, uh, you can take the stem. Ow. Ooh, just kidding, just kidding. What? Oh, just trying to make sure you're watching. I was scared. Just make sure you're watching. All right, so I'm going to cut about, I only need about a half a cup here of the, uh, of the parsley. But I'm just going to do a real, now you can go as rough or as light as you want on this. I'm going to go a little bit more fine on my chop just because it looks really, really nice later on when it's all cooked and you have all that beautiful kind of herb spilling out. But I'm excited to show you the trussing technique. So we're just gonna chop a little parsley. That's about good, that's more than a cup. I got about a, that's close to half a cup. If you got a little bench scraper, this is where this comes in really handy. Just scrape that off. Could you use other herbs in there as well? Yes, great question, Charlotte Samuel. You can absolutely use other herbs in there. Now, I like the typical gremolata is usually using parsley, but again, there are so many different flavors uh, and there's so many great herbs out there that we have uh, at your local HEB that you can really kind of use, you can use anything. I also really love gremolata with a little bit of fresh dill in there. I am going to use fresh dill later, so I'm not going to add that to it because I've got a couple of other dishes I'm going to do. So uh, I'm going to zest a little garlic. That's my way of doing it. I think we talked about this before. I've the never... microplane is so useful. It it's has so, so great for uses. this. I use it as my cheese grater because if you've never used a microplane as a cheese grater, it makes like soft pillows of cheese. It's like, like it just, it, they're so delicate, like... light. I'm telling you, go get, go get a, if you have a brick of Parmesan cheese in your fridge, take it out and start grating it on that microplane. It just, it just kind of like falls like feathers. So a little bit of garlic in here, uh, bench scraper, a little bit of garlic in there. Uh, and then Giovanna the lemon wants zest. to know if it's your favorite kitchen tool. You know, Giovanna, there's a lot of kitchen tools that are my favorite. I think my favorite is probably my chef's knife, but a, a second that I use probably almost as much is probably the microplane. It's got to be pretty close. I don't really have much use for like smaller knives, like some of the little, uh, I don't usually, I, I never like to use the uh, paring knives. I've just never been a big fan of paring. They're just harder to use for me. I like the bigger, bigger style knives. All right, a little bit of lemon zest to go in there, and that's basically, that's the gremolata. Now, all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of olive oil to this. I only need a few tablespoons. Again, I don't wanna make it like, normally when you're making a gremolata, you'd kinda do a little bit more. You'd have it be a little bit more of a wet kind of a dip, but if this is, this is a, uh, it's a stuffing, good pinch of salt, a little bit of pepper. Now, now that I added the salt and I'm kinda mixing all this up, you are gonna get that, it'll start to leach out some of that moisture, which is totally fine from the parsley and it'll make more of a wet mixture like the one I have here. So that'll get stirred around, and this gets spread on there. So we'll go back, we'll move this over, I'll show you this again. So here's the gremolata that I've got ready to go. This so is I'm where really the liking this, this trick with the cutting boards. Yes. It's one like of my that? favorites, that's really smart. That's how we help with cross-contamination. You don't wanna be cross-contaminating. I don't wanna make a raw salad, and then, or cut up a raw chicken, and then beautifully, uh, the chicken guts are still on the board, and mm. I put my head of iceberg lettuce and start chopping away. And then and I can making throw it right your, in the trash. Making your wedge <laughs> salad, yeah. That's right. So, all right, so my gremolata. So I'm just gonna take this out. So you don't need a lot. If you wanna go crazy, you totally can. All I'm looking to do, again, is perfume a little bit of this pork with that. So it's all gonna get rolled up. The smell right now, if you can't smell this, this has had some time, this is the one I made earlier, this had some time to sit, it's like, it's on. So I'm gonna season the inside, why? Because we wanna season every ounce of our meat. I'm gonna season the outside, but when I season the outside, the seasoning is only going to go so far, so I want to make sure I really season this. Now, I, yes, true, I did add a little bit of salt and pepper to my mixture, the gremolata, but I want to make sure we got flavor throughout. I'm going to add the other glove, and then we're going to start trussing. So who, is there anybody that's afraid to trust, or just hasn't trust, or just doesn't want to do it? Because at your local HB meat market, when you're picking up your beautiful all-natural pork tenderloin, our, uh, our butchers and meat market partners are great at trussing and would be happy to trust meat for you if you needed them to. You'll notice during the holidays, usually they trust the meat. So you see how I did that? Sorry, I did that kind of fast. So the seam is, uh, up. is facing up, right? So yes. you rolled now, it and then, okay. It, well, you can, it doesn't matter. Like I can leave it up like this. I'm okay. just gonna do it because it's easier when I tie it. It'll, you'll see it's totally natural. Stuff's gonna start falling out, but that's okay. And what so, is, uh, tell us again one more time, what is the thickness that you pounded that out to? About I, half This inch? was, I just wanted it thin enough to where, this is probably, if I had to look at, it's a quarter inch. It could be a little bit thicker if you wanted to. It's just enough to where you can just apply something and just kind of give it okay. a fold. And if you don't cut it deep enough, it's totally fine. If you don't cut it enough to where you can't roll it up three or four times, don't worry about it. I can't either. Some of these are really small, so just 
roll it or just fold it up and then when you trust it, it'll be okay. I would if you only were able to do kind of, a, if you couldn't smash it well enough and it's just kind of like a little book fold. Yeah. Just kind of stuff the center of it and then just kind of bring it together if you can. Okay. And then leave the seam up and then just tie it seam up so that way it'll help everything from falling out. So to trust. So here we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little surgeon's knot first, which is basically, you describe this. I didn't learn how to tie my shoes like this. Charlotte said it. It's what do you do over the, you do through the through the loop to loop twice or something like that. What was your what was your it goes, you got like a, through, it goes under the under the wait the bunny loop goes when you're tying your loop. shoes. The bunny goes oh I under? forget now it goes under the under loop. Yeah. You probably I, just I apologize if we confused you further. Oh I apologize. so sorry everyone. You want to do you it's just want to tie knot. you want to go underneath <laughs> once and then you would tie like you tie like a regular knot. You do the first one but you do it you do a double loop inside and then tie it and that'll that'll keep it tight on this side. If you have to tighten a double knot, it's totally fine. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So I'm going to keep. Now this is all still stuck to my my twine here because I don't know how much I'm going to need. Now this is a smaller piece of pork, so I could probably cut this off. I won't need it. This is where the uh, the eye trick is going to come in. So you got the upper. You see this upside camera here, our sky cam. So I'm going to take this the, this just like this the the string, and I'm going to I'm going to fold it over. It's so hard to explain this. I'm going to wrap it under. And I'm going to cinch it. So you see how that's cinched like that? So it cinches up, and you just kind of, kind of slide it and move it. All I do is kind of just make it where it's even. Now, the more you practice this, I promise you, the better you'll get. And you can make it to where they'll see it, where it's like that beautiful line where it's kind of all rigged. You don't, I'm not going to do that tonight. But it's just trussing it and then doing it. Was that too fast? I'll do it again a little slower. So we're just going to pull it really, really tight. And again, you'll see some stuff start falling out the bottom. Don't even worry about it. So you do so the I'm loop here. first. I'm going to do the loop. And then you I'm take it through. I'm going under and sliding it, and then okay. I'm going to pull the string and see how it makes a little it, thing there for the me. And the tension, got it. That's good. So it takes this, I, I can't tell you how many chickens I first trust when I came to the culinary center here doing stuff when we first opened this place, but there was a lot of trusting that went on, and so I could probably do this in my sleep when I trust. Um, but this is, a, this is a really cool just trick to have. So you see I'm going to do, so that one was, you see there's a lot that more really, stuff. So show everyone that one more time. So before so, you, before you. So I've got my loop. So I'm, I'm taking this, yep. this is my, I'm right handed. So my left hand is going to take it. Got it. I'm going to flip it kind of over it like this. So I'm yep. kind of creating that. I'm going to go all the way down, slide it up. And then there's your little tie. And then if you needed to, you can kind of like fold this up. I'm not really going to worry about it. That but looks good. You did a very drag nice it, job. But look, see the little stuff's coming out the back. That's okay, because guess what? I'm just going to kind of tuck him back in there. All right, and that's it. So you can cut this. You can just give it, I just give it another little wrap just to make sure it won't come off. I'm not going to do anything too fancy. I don't need to like get crazy with the ties. This little guy is going to get seasoned very well. So like, again, I already showed you the one that was already in there. I'm just going to throw this in our oven. We'll see so, if these get baked. I'll do a time and temp check on these. Okay. You see, I'm doing a really seasoning the heck out of this guy. If, if that is a lot, if that's, if that was a lot, the trusting, you could definitely just tie each, you could tie, tie a whole bunch of knots and then cut them off before you exactly. serve it and nobody will know and you can tell people you trust it exactly. and we'll support you. Because you can always, so she's absolutely right, if you wanted to cut your butcher's twine into a, into a bunch of different little smaller pieces of twine and you just want to tie double knots all the way down, you could later make it look like you did it professionally by taking another piece of string and weaving it through those little ties. For sure. And then they'd be like, whoa, you're yeah. a professional trusser. And you're like, of course I am. Did you expect yeah, anything like, less? Scott showed me how to do it. <laughs> uh, all right. I can't tell you how many times I failed before I succeeded at that. And that's okay. That's what we're here for. Just adding tools to the little culinary belt. I'm going to give myself a little, uh, little wipe down here. So uh, Andy, anything so far that's, uh, that's standing out to you as far as like other little tips or things like that that we could... That was super Tell fun. I had never, I have, till this day, I have not done that. So I the appreciate trusting. both options. <laughs> so it's Chef Scott, great skill, but also Chef Charlotte. So if I'm struggling, then just <laughs> Tie it double you knots. do what you can. Exactly. No, but I think, I think the, the main course, I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, the benefits of, of pork and um, we did mention the serving size. So thank you, Chef yep. Charlotte, for mentioning that. So three ounces is, you know, what we recommend, which is the size of your palm of your hand. I also want to mention that when we think about the benefits of pork, per se, um, it's an excellent source of thiamine, uh, selenium, um, niacin, vitamin B6, phosphorus. So a lot of great vitamins and nutrients that are just really going to help protect our health. So I learned, by the way, we're moving on. I'm moving on here because we're doing this. Uh, the pork is in the oven. So um, in order to keep the pork crispy, like I said, I have a pair of tongs handy and about, we've about 15 minutes left. So can you see in there? Look at that, Rob, what? See how it's kind of getting golden brown on the top? I'm going to give it, 
It's a little bit of turn because I want to make sure it stays nice and brown on both sides. Give it a little turn. Close it back up. Still doing its thing. I'm let it go. So we're going to make our toasted farro salad with kale ash and dried cherries. So what is kale ash? That's a great question. That sounds I have to show fancy. You what kale ash is. So we're going to start with kale. So I've got lacinato kale. If we have time, I'm going to show you how to make kale bacon because this is my favorite kale to use to make kale bacon because when you kind of do it, it does look like little pieces of bacon because it's got those little bimply bumps on it. <laughs> bimply bumps. Not a word you hear every day. Uh, so also <laughs> lacinato kale, also known as dino kale. I think, is, I think when we sell it at HEB, we call it uh, lacinato or Tuscan kale. So if you see it on the shelf, you'll notice that's what it is. All right, so I'm going to do a little rough chop on our kale here. You can go as big or as little as you want. It doesn't really matter how, uh, how much you do. It ends up being about, I, I say about a, uh, a one bunch of kale, ends up being close to three cups. If it's a little more than that, a little less, it's totally fine. It's kale, right? So Kale's good for us. Yep, has antioxidants. Um, we say kale is king. <laughs> kale is king. Who and you thought? don't take it off the. You don't take it off the. Nope, I don't. Okay. I don't take it off just because I don't mind the. Great question though. If you're using like a curly kale, which those ribs can be a little bit thicker, you can take those off. I don't mind because I'm gonna roast the ever-loving heck out of this in the oven, so it'll get it'll get crispy. I don't mind the texture. The lacinato or Tuscan kale tends to be a little bit softer, so it renders and is totally fine. So I've got about three cups of kale in here. I'm gonna julienne my red onion. Julienne. So julienne. Um, if you haven't watched our classes, we did a couple of juliennes. It's just a very thinly sliced kind of onion. On an onion, the way you do it is just like this. You know the karma is gonna come back because I tricked everybody that I was cut my cut myself. It was a dirty trick to play. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. I just had to make sure they were paying attention. So very thinly sliced. You see I cut the onion in half, very thinly sliced. I only need about a half a cup of julienne onion. Once you get to here, rather than sacrifice your knuckles, again we've got a little cat's paw, knuckles are in, just turn it like that and then start over again. And just do it does help to have a sharp knife here when you start getting closer. That's about all I need. That's good to go. Now, if you want to dice this, if you're walking through HEB and you see our value-added veg, we've already got diced red onions. Just use that. Again, it's all about, right, it's like meal planning. If you want to, you want to hustle, make it easier. So the onions are going to go in here, our red onions. And this is just going to get salt and pepper, so a good pinch of salt. So we're layering flavors at this point. This is the kale ash that's going to get cooked. That's going to be a part of the farro salad that we're going to toast in a second. Um, a little olive oil. So I want to make sure at every stage we're doing this, we are seasoning it because if we don't season it at any stage, I love, we talked about this earlier, you two, about the, for me, roasting the heck out of kale where it's almost burnt is like the best thing in the world because the flavor is so great. Um, I don't know nutritionally what that does to like, I know we talked about like, I know uh, we were with the dietitian, she talked about like, well, you know, if you boil your vegetables, all the nutrients come out in the water, but then you can cook your pasta in the water. I thought that was a really cool no, tip and sure. trick. No, for sure. And cooking does alter some of the nutrients and vitamins of vegetables, but right. we always say when we look at raw or cooked, we want you just to have them and enjoy them. So either or is a great option, but you're right, Chef Scott, that, you know, through cooking methods, you do alter some of the nutrients and vitamins of some of the vegetables that we're using today. I love burn kale. Cauliflower and Brussels sprouts have been really popular now lately. A lot of restaurants like they're just, it's just, you burn them, that caramelized flavor of, what was, you, what was the word? I lost the word. Cruciferous? Brassica. brassica. That was what it is. Brassica. I like the brassica. Okay. So the kale's tossed. That's just salt, pepper, red onion. That's it. All I'm going to do, sheet pan, really simply. Save my piece of parchment paper because I'm going to show you a trick. Onto our sheet pan. This will go back over here. I'll reuse that. I'm going to just spread this out a little bit and this goes into the oven to be incinerated. Why? Because that's going to add flavor to the salad later on. So this can be cooled. This is a, this is a great thing about that is it's a make ahead step. So we could definitely do that ahead of time and it'll cool. And what does it look like? Because I promised you the kale ash. What is that like? So kale ash is like kale chips, right? It's like I kale mean, chips. But we love doing that at home and spinach chips. Oh yeah. so. so I got ahead of myself and I made kale bacon. Oh. Because I was like, if I have time, I'll show you how to make it. But this is the same thing. It's kale bacon using the. And I think the somebody kale. asked about that. So kale bacon, what are you putting on there? So, it's salt, pepper, and smoked paprika. You can add garlic powder. You can add onion powder. But literally, those are the three key ingredients. You toss it together. I take the ribs out of the kale bacon because I want it to be really crispy and light. I want to be chewing on that stem. Um, the kale ash. This is why we call it kale ash. So this is the exact same ingredients, exact same quantities. This is what it end up looking like. You can see it on our. Whoop, whoop. There it is. 
it's hard. You know, when you're seeing something from the top, you don't think it'd be like you're pulling it back and forth. This is why we have rehearsal. All right, so we have the kale here, we have the onions, everything is beautifully caramelized and has all that burnt flavor. Reason why we call it kale ash is because when I add it to the ingredients of the, of the salad, it's gonna crumble just like ash. And so all that flavor is gonna like, act like kind of like a salad dressing to the actual farro itself. It's gonna give really, and this is really hard to get off your hands, by the way. That's it's also, I brilliant, wanna, I, by the way, <laughs> I, I'm like, I want, I want to eat a piece, but then it'll be stuck in my teeth all the time because it literally just kind of like just Dang falls it. apart. I'll spare you that. I would so, have paid uh, money for that show. So <laughs> later, that's the that's the ten o'clock hour. <laughs> all right, so so that's that. So now we're going to move over to our other cam. I'm going to show you how we're going to toast the kale. So that is going the other half of our dish here. So I've got my uh, my KNT pan here. You can see it. Now we're over at the stove cam. So we've got the overhead camera. You can see it. <laughs> Hopefully you can see it. Uh, our awesome KNT uh, kind of like I would say this kind of our copper pan. Um, line really good. I think it's a titanium, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's titanium. Uh, but I want you to be able to see it from the top. So as it's cooking, kind of see what's going on. I'm going to remove the lid for now. So farro. So talk a little bit about the grain farro before I start toasting it and cooking. Because it's a very specific way. I'm going to show you how to do this, which is great. And you can use this on any grain from quinoa to rice to do the exact same way. So it's a great kind of trick to use. So yeah, what are like so some great- Yeah, so farro is a nutritious grain. It's loaded with fiber, it has protein, and also some essential minerals and vitamins. Um, what I also want to say is that if you're not a fan of farro, you can do other grains such as okay. quinoa, couscous, um, wild rice, brown rice. Brown rice. You know, there's a, a load of, of, of grains that you can use just to benefit as it. far as, you know, your B vitamins, just essential nutrients. And this is, farro is not gluten free for the folks at home, correct? Yeah. It's not gluten free. No. But lots of fiber. Okay, so I have, I have farro. So it so, meets your whole grains right there. There you go, I like it. thinking about my plate, you get the, the whole grains. There you go. Servings right there. So the recipe calls for about a quarter cup of olive oil. Why? I'm gonna show you why. It seems like a lot of olive oil and it is. I love olive oil, and I'm assuming yeah. that you know some health benefits of olive oil as well, which means it's probably good for us to be eating it. I feel like I go through a bottle a week. Like, that's not even, Same. I'm not even kidding. Some like, healthy like fats, monounsaturated fats. So, you know, we are a fan of olive oil. Moderation is key, but it has a lot of benefits when it comes to protective heart health benefits and whatnot. I, I mean, overdose? it still has calories, right? Yes, yes. Bummer. Am I going to overdose if I have, like, if I'm doing <laughs> too much? Probably not. All right, I want to keep me in the, you got to keep me straight, doctor. Keep me straight. All right, here we go. All right, so the recipe does not call for garlic. I am going to add two different ingredients because, again, we want to layer flavor. So I'm starting with just olive oil and farro. Now, that's all the recipe calls for. You're just going to toast this really well, which is going to add a lot of flavor to the party. But I'm going to add two different things because, again, you're here in the class. I'm going to show you my tricks. So if this were me at home doing it, I'm going to crush two cloves of garlic. And I, just, I just lightly crush it. I'm going to throw it in the oil. I'm going to throw another one in the oil. If you like a lot more garlic, do it. All we're going to do is perfume it. I'm going to add a little red pepper flakes because I happen to know some people aren't here like spicy food. So a little pepper, I'm going to let this get toasted. As soon as the red pepper flakes start to kind of brown a little bit before they burn, that's when I'm going to add in my farro. And I'm going to toast this. I'm going to toast it for a while. The garlic's going to go in the entire time, just about until we add the liquid, and then we'll pull that out. So I'm using the Central Market Italian farro, quick cook grain. Uh, great question. What happens if I don't live near an HEB that has the Italian farro quick grain? I just have the regular farro, which is a very dense grain as well. So the quick cook farro is already pre-cooked and then dried. If you're using it, I cooked a original farro. So I cooked the one I have that's already made, I used was the straight farro, not pre-cooked. Pre-cooked saves you a little bit of time, but you don't so have traditional... to use if, you, if it's the only thing you have. Okay. Yeah, so it's the only thing that's gonna be different if you're using quick cooked versus the regular farro would be the amount of liquid and the amount of time it's gonna to take to actually cook the farro. Okay. So this is gonna, I am literally frying the farro. That's exactly what you wanna do. I'm gonna fry this up because this is where all the flavor is gonna be. So I'm gonna to toast that. You can see my garlic is gonna get really, really browned. Now if your garlic, I've got, you know, 55,000 BTU oven over here. So it's, mine's gonna do it a little faster than maybe most home stoves will. As soon as I see the garlic start to brown, not turn like black. If it starts to turn black, get it out of there because all I want the garlic to do is perfume it enough to where it's gonna give a little garlic hint of flavor and then I'm gonna take it out. So it'll just be kind of like a nice little scent because we are going to add a dressing later. It's one of my favorite dressings, one of the first dressings I ever made in the restaurant, which is just lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, olive oil, and a little bit of garlic. And the garlic sits in the acid which is where we get this acidulation from. And the acid will actually kind of start to cook or soften the garlic. So when we add it to our salad, you won't get that like raw hit of garlic. Now garlic is also, so my neighbor's Tunisian, and he talked about how when he was a kid, 
he, they would always rub, I think I've told this story before, so I apologize, but he, he would get <laughs> scratches or whatever, and his mom would rub garlic, raw garlic on his thing because it's like antibacterial. Yeah, it has a lot of Not powerful you need properties. To, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Topical and then also, I know I mentioned heart health, and then also when we think about even just digestive health, there's a lot of research that says that a lot of great benefits when we think about garlic. I'm a garlic fan. So I am too. Everything with garlic. And what you're doing right now reminds me of like Mexican rice. I, yeah. These are simple steps that look Universal. very familiar to me. 100%. So you could do this with rice, brown rice. I do this with quinoa. Any grain I have, I toast the exact same way. All right. This is going to keep toasting. I turn the heat down a little bit. I'm going to show you how to cartouche. We're going to walk back over here. So one of the best ways to make rice, I cooked rice for six months until I actually could actually cook it for the restaurant and cook it, um, put it on the line, my rice, because I screwed it up every single time. So my biggest thing was a cartouche. So what is a cartouche? I think we have a graphic right is there a graphic? Is it there yet? Nope, it's going in the chat. Aww. It's going in the chat. That would have been so great. One of these days I'll get it right and I'll just be like, it'll just go bing, bing. But until then, it's okay. So we're going to do the, uh, the sky cam. So you can't really see it on my, on my whiteboard, but it's a piece of parchment paper. Actually, let me just do this. Let's just move all this off the way for a second. So why would we want to cartouche our rice or want to do this to our rice? Because in the pan, you can see right now, there is a lot of empty space. So in that empty space, there's a lot of dry heat. And so if we just put the lid on it, which is great, we're gonna do a lot of, it'll do a lot of good, it'll cook, but I'm gonna put a piece of parchment over the top because I want it to lay right on top of the water and the rice, and that steam will come up, it'll hit our cartouche, or our parchment, and it will drive it back down, it'll help cook the rice. It also means I can add less liquid, which gives you that really, everybody knows you have that really fluffy rice where yeah. like all the kernels are, that's one of the keys to making really, really good rice like that. It's Love also really important like when you're that. toasting the grain, right? So that also helps to keep that Yes, exactly. Individual. Yeah, we're cooking a little bit of the starch, so I'm gonna move this starch. around, it's still going. I'm on a really low heat, so I'm not as worried about it. Okay, cartouche. This was wet, when parchment gets wet, it gets ruined, so I'm gonna do a new piece of parchment. So here's how we do it. I'll do it a couple times, so you can follow me here. Well, this so, works for everything. I Googled Short it. Ribs. I was yeah? curious at like the, like, it. the, the definition or like where cartouche came from. It's French, um, right? It's I know French, that. right? And there's some other meanings in other languages. But it's typically used like when they talk about something that's wrapped in paper. So like... Yeah. Almost like an impapillot. Like they, yeah, like steam yeah. So or, cartouche is like a cartridge right. or whatever that would they would use like... They would put the gunpowder in like a paper cone, oh, yeah. kind of like that. Or like they would wrap cigarettes or something like that in paper. So it's something that's wrapped in paper. So I thought it was a little bit of... I love it. Not only is it a cooking program we can learn, but it's basically like a, it's like a Wikipedia episode. I know, well, so smart Between the doctor <laughs> and all the great facts. Is everybody taking okay. notes? There's going to be an example. Everybody later. taking notes. So I'm, I'm going to show you this real quick. So here's how I do it. So I'm basically going to fold it like a paper airplane. Don't worry. If you miss this, I'm going to do it again. You're going to fold it over and you're going to fold it over and then I'm going to cut it to fit. But here's how I'm going to figure out how to do this. Now, could you take a piece of parchment, put your lid of your pan on there, take a marker and draw it over the top? Yes. You will also possibly have some marker on your lid, which you don't want. So I'm going to show you what to do this. We're going to move back over here. I'm just going to give us a toss. So depending on how big my pot is, I'm going to put the center of the paper, whatever the point is, right in the center of the pot. That's where I need to cut it. So I'm going to put my fingers right there on the pot. That's how big my cartouche needs to be. And that way, so when I get over here, I'm going to cut my cartouche and I have Wait for it. A coffee filter. It's like origami, right? It's like the funnest thing in the world. So I'm going to do it again. So here we go. So piece of parchment. This is just a regular half sheet pan size of parchment. You're going to start by folding it in half. So if you're following along or you want to watch this later on YouTube, you can do this. You're going to fold your parchment in half. Seam, fold it in half again. And then from here, where do you go? So you don't do it. Because you can make, you can do this the same way but if you do it wrong, you'll have two halves of a circle, which is totally fine and usable. You want your open end to be on the top. That should be the top. So I'm gonna fold where the folded end is. I'm gonna fold this over, just like this. And just like a paper airplane, every time you're gonna get closer and closer. Does that make sense? Or it seems like it makes sense. And you're, until you find it, now you can go one more if you want to, you don't need to, Oh, but you look can. at you, you're just showing off. Yeah. And then you're gonna, you're gonna measure it from the tip to the point, however big the pot is, and then you'll cut that. What's the Ge geometric, what the math, the radius, it's the radius. Math. The radius is the radius, radius of the, the so I did it the easy way, so there you go. So every <laughs> single time, you can practice this over and over again. You can make plenty of cartouches for every single pan. And when you need to, now this doesn't just work for rice. If you're not a rice eater, don't worry. 
I'll move back over here. You can always use this. If you're big on braising dishes, these for braised dishes, it's amazing. So like if you had short ribs or whatever, you're cooking something, you have a longer cooking time, the same thing is gonna apply because in this pan, all that good vegetables, all that, all that meat and everything's in the bottom and it's gonna take a while for that to cook. Well, if you put the cartouche on top, it kind of seals everything. So that way it's gonna be a lot more Less moisture, even cooking time. Yeah. Right, that's toasting. This is done, so I'm gonna attempt that and I'm gonna make our raw salad. How much time do I have? Do I still have time? Am I, am I impeding anything or am I all right? You're at, um, you have about 20 minutes, Chef. You're okay. good, you're at 40 Plenty minutes so All right, far. here we go. Let me do this. Put a little towel here. So you can see how, look at how pretty Ooh, that is. La la. Right? And so, and because we trust it, it's like perfectly in shape. It's perfectly done. I'm gonna attempt this out. If you do use, so um, who was saying they did the, you said somebody was gonna do a two pound pork tenderloin? Yes. So the internal temp of my, my pork right now is about 170. So it is way, way okay. good. Now, because we're, now typically pork needs to be about 145 per the new regulations, which is fine. So if you want yours a little more raw, just pour rare. out a little sooner. Rare. More rare. Raw. Is, yeah. Carpaccio, yeah. that doesn't sound good when you say pork raw. No? <laughs> <laughs> what is, I, I learn new things every day. All right, so I'm going to put this back in there. Hungry. She says she's getting so hungry. She's getting hungry. It smells amazing, by the way. I'm going to let this sit. That's just going to rest. So that pork is done. It's good to go. This is still going. I'm going to add my water. So now that I'm doing this, you can see I've got a little bit of, I'm getting some real good toasting on this. So you don't really want the farro to change color per se. It doesn't need to really, it's not really going to get toasted. You're looking more for the nose of it. So it's the smell of it. You want it to be, I definitely smell some, I smell some toasting, maybe a little bit of burning. That's okay. I'm going to add my water in here. So I'm going to do this and I don't want anybody to freak out because I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my hand in hot liquid again. So when I learned to make rice at this restaurant in Charlotte, we had a conversation about this. You also learn the same thing. The way they know you've got enough liquid in your, in your rice to cook your rice or whatever grain you're cooking is by putting your thumb in it and you want the, wherever you touch the rice to the water. So I've got, I'm gonna add, I should add a little bit more water, but I'm not going to. You wanna just go up to, just cover your thumb in water. That's how you would do it. I don't recommend you doing that, but that's the way I learned how to do it. I care for your safety, so. Yes, just, uh, please don't put your hands the in of, boiling. Trust the amount of water you've got in there. Yeah. Now, if say somebody goes, hey, I put too much liquid in there, I think there's too much, take the cartouche off, turn it up to high heat, let some of that water evaporate, and then go and apply the cartouche again, and then put the lid back on and then do it. If you feel like it's like, whoa, it's getting really mushy, just do that. Now, you don't have to cook this way. I like to do it this way because there's way more flavor this way. If you wanted to, like with any grain, you could cook it just like, look at how perfect it sits in there. What? Look at that. Can you see that? Come on. <laughs> That's what? math. You the did lid math. Goes, the lid goes on, and I'm going to turn the heat way, way down here. Move my pot over. I'm going to turn the heat way, way down. I'm just going to let that sit. And that'll need about 15 minutes. I already have some pre-made, so it's great. But that way you can kind of see if you wanted to cook this like pasta. It's a great way to cook grains like that is to just basically fill up a big pot of boiling hot salted water and then cook your pasta until it gets to the point where you feel like it's soft. Now, farro does have a very toothiness or chewiness to it. So you're going to have that kind of al dente feel. So it does have a, it's just a thicker grain, right? It's like, a, I would say like a brown rice, a little huskier than I think a brown rice. What's it nutritionally? Is there any difference between like, I mean, I'm sure there is, but uh, to me, well, this, like I, I mean, this is loaded with fiber protein. So it's very beneficial when we think about right. just the comparison to other rice or other grains. I always right. say every grain has a, you know, something special about them. And this is definitely one that we like to recommend. I like it. So if you're uh, what are some other good grains out there, Charlotte, and like some other grains that are good that maybe people maybe not know about, or maybe that are, that are also very healthy superfoods. Buzzword, Ooh, buzzword, superfood, superfood. Is there anything like that I they can they can look like into? I know people like quinoa because it has a lot of protein. Quinoa. That's high in protein, yeah. right? There's um. Oh gosh, now you ask me and I can't think of anything. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Okay, so our final dish of the night, and I will. I think I'm, I may have time to make the uh, the kale bacon. I'll show you how to do it, even though I've already made it. So uh, I can smell this starting to get a little more. It's getting there. I'll just show you in the camera here, just so you can see. It's not quite there yet. I, when I say obliterate it, I mean literally uh, obliterate it. So you can see like it's getting there. This is definitely hot. So there's, and it's, some of it's crispy, but you want to go until most of the green should look really, really dark like army green. So that goes back in the oven. And again, anytime we're roasting that, so like we've got our red onion, so that's an aromatic. So it's going to be really, really caramelized. It's going to add a lot of flavor to that actual salad. So here's the salad. This is our, this is raw. It's our raw salad. So raw vegetables, we're not, this is, nothing is getting cooked in this. People know a lot of beets, like people have roasted beets. 
These are raw beets. Why raw beets? Because I just wanted to do raw I beets. Love all <laughs> beets. I love raw any beets any which way they come. Um, this is really, really simple. So I'm using the HEV Julienne carrots. So it's these guys. I'm just using two bags. I love stuff like this. This is like, if you're a texture freak, this is literally the salad that will blow your mind because it's so many textures of, the beets we're gonna grate, they're raw, but we're gonna grate them through a, uh, through a box grater, just like a cheese grater on the biggest setting, and they're gonna get, so you have that, they're a little bit chewy, but they have such a sweetness, and like, when you, people think of like a roasted beet, they think of like, that kind of caramelized, because roasting a beet in the oven, you're gonna concentrate all the flavor, you're gonna concentrate those sugars, so it has like a very sweet, soft flavor. Still has that earthiness, but the raw beets that we're gonna peel, the outer skin, we're gonna wash and peel them, and then we're gonna grate them, they still have that kind of earthiness to them, but they don't have that same, they just have like a, it's a different kind of sweetness, it's really, really good, plus it's gonna be a beautiful color that all this is adding to. Now, we talk about eat the rainbow, right? Yes. I heard many of our dishes, so you talk about eat the rainbow, so like what is it in, what is it in the beets that's like, what gives it the color, what makes it, like is what's nutritiously different about these? So like, beets have, um have uh, antioxidants, right? Okay. So it's kind of like when we think about just some of those fruits and vegetables that have additional health benefits, this is gonna be one of them, can protect your health. Um, as far as the, the color, I'm gonna butcher, how I'm gonna say it, but um, <laughs> it, it's betalin, betalin, be, be, yeah, betalin, let's just say it's that, B-E-T-A-L-A-I-N is what yeah. gives it the powerful color. But what we love about this dish is the, you know, all the, the colors that we have, we are eating the rainbow, and that's what we want. We want variety. We wanna make sure that we're just adding, you know, all these nutrients, all these I essential minerals so that we can just get, be our best self and just protect our health. Absolutely. So I'm gonna do something, uh, the dressing for this is also very simple. Again, we're using a lot of fresh lemon, a lot of fresh citrus. Now you could totally change it up and do, hey, I wanna throw grapefruit in this. If you wanna do shallots instead of garlic, you can. I love raw garlic and carrot, I'm just a, I'm just, I'm weird like that. But if you want to do like a little julienne shallot, you totally could. So I've got my lemon juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice. I'm going to put it in with the garlic. I'm going to give that a second, <clears throat> give a little stir. So this is going to acidulate the garlic. So what is, when you talk about acidulation, it's basically, I'm going to kind of slowly cook this. It's almost going to be like garlic ceviche. So it's going to sit in an acid. Lemon juice obviously is very acidic. It's going to sit in there and it's going to kind of soften the flavor of the garlic a little bit because you don't want to have that real pungent raw garlic. So you could just throw it all together. In the recipe, it just says throw it all together. It'll kind of work its way out and it's good. And it's really raw. But in order to soften it, that's my trick is to throw a little lemon juice in there and let it sit. The only other seasoning I'm using besides salt and pepper is cumin because I love cumin in this. So it kind of goes from like South Texas to like Middle Eastern Mediterranean. We have a like very Mediterranean type, feel type happening here. I am a here. freak for Mediterranean. I love yeah. Mediterranean Middle East. That's my favorite, favorite food. Okay, raw beets. So if you, uh, I'm gonna use my cartouche that I made earlier to grate my beets on because uh, grating beets, if you don't have a pair of gloves, just be prepared because later on when you're doing something and you look down at your hands, you're like, holy cow, I'm bleeding. I've got, I've got blood under my fingernails, what's going on? Kitchen gloves are like my favorite. They are. My favorite kitchen tool. You can touch raw meat with them. I'm telling you. Beets, all the things. So we've done a lot of events, uh, Charlotte, we did an event at the Austin Food and Wine Fest one year and we used, uh, at the time we had these really cool carrots that they came from Texas A&M and they were maroon and we did a pulled pork dish but it was carrots and the way they looked, it's going to look similar to this where it has kind of almost like a meat, if you were to look at it you could like, oh you could kind of mistake it for almost like a, a shredded kind of a meat product, that's kind of what you're going to get from this. So I'm just going to shred these and you'll see it's going to go everywhere, hence the kitchen gloves and the cutting board. But just grate them. You only need about two cups. You don't want much. It's, this is predominantly a carrot salad, but it has the raw beet in there. I find about two cups is between three and four, or even five and six of the uh, medium size, medium to small beets. Now, if you find the one, and I always look for them because I love to roast them, the gigantic, like, bulb size head. Every once in a while you'll find them an organic that size, but it's harder to find an organic. Uh, I love to roast those because I like to cut those and make those into like carpaccio once you roast it. Little goat cheese on there. What? All right. What is carpaccio, chef? Carpaccio is like a, it's an Italian dish where they would take a, like filet or whatever and they'd serve it, they'd slice it really thin. You freeze it and you slice it really, really thinly and you put it on a plate and you put like capers and not truffle oil, not for you. No. <laughs> uh, a little cheese, a little bit of truffle, but they do like capers and other things. So here's my raw beets, oh, right into great. my carrots. Really pretty. I'm eating the rainbow, Andy. Yes, for sure. Eating the rainbow. We're doing uh, it. I'm it's take actually, my there are other ways that you can enjoy beets. So, 
you know, I always like to share, my dad used to love beets. And, yeah. You know, as we were children, we kind of just like go away <laughs> when he was eating beets. <laughs> but um, now as an adult, obviously I enjoy them. Yeah. But are there any other ways that you want to recommend? Uh, I love, I love, so I love them in this dish. I love them a little, a little bit raw. Look at this bloody mess up here with the beets, uh, the beet blood. The, um, I love them raw, but I also love them, I love them roasted. My favorite way to do them is, uh, is to take a little bit of uh, walnut oil. We have that toasted walnut oil. I roast them. I add burrata. I add the, uh, a little bit of honey and I add some kind of crushed nut on there and it's like beautiful. Over. Yeah. And a little bit you of can vinegar. actually just roast those guys with the skin on, um, take yeah. off the stem and then put them wrap them up in foil or put them in a dish, yep. wrap them in foil, roast them in the oven. And then with your kitchen gloves or a clean dish towel, just once they're done, just pe they peel very easily. They do. So uh, until just now, I haven't talked about all these great herbs I have in front of me. So I've got some good stuff that's going in our, what I didn't talk about with, we talk about layering the flavor of our, our uh, toasted fire and kale salad with the cherries. We're gonna have some smoked almonds in there. We're gonna add some fresh basil. This is a blank canvas. So you can really add whatever you want. To this salad, I'm gonna add the dill. If you're not a fan of dill, I would say revisit dill. I was never a big fan of dill until I started having it in different dishes. And I was like, what's that little, what's that flavor that's so, and it is, it really is the dill does bring out a lot of really different nuances and all these, you talk about all these like phytonutrients and all those things like, yeah. there's gotta be some kind of chemical play off of this, off this, all this yeah, stuff so getting dill together. Dill is rich in antioxidants. It's a good source of vitamin C, magnesium, vitamin A. So. You know, as you mentioned, Chef, there's just a lot of great benefits to uh, consuming dill and a lot of different herbs that we're using today. Mint. I love mint. You're still going to take us through the molecular levels of the <laughs> mint, right? I'm still going to hold you to that. Uh, I'm going to roll this up. I, uh, I don't like to fuss with my herbs. I usually typically dust them off. If you want to wash them, you can absolutely just dip in a little bit of water. I like them just fresh. I don't mind. Uh, they do such a good job. The, our, our, uh, our herb supplier, our Patty's Herbs, does such an amazing job with their uh, with their herbs and most people don't realize that the farm where like 90 percent of these herbs come is like 20 miles from our headquarters in san antonio which is really cool so fresh wanna, mint i do want to add that mint does have anti-inflammatory properties so Boom. it's you know a good relaxant but then also relieves congestion so we are in flu season so this could be something great to add to our dishes as we think about you know flu season and whatnot absolutely so the cumin goes in so i'm adding more than the recipe calls for on the herbs because we're gonna eat this, and I want to eat. I want to eat an herb-forward dish here. Um, a little bit of pepper goes in. A little bit of salt. You can always add more. Uh, another great seasoning, if you want to add this to it, would be coriander. Coriander is a great herb to add in here, or just add fresh cilantro. Um, is another one. So I'm gonna add a little lemon juice. I don't want to really go crazy dressing the salad. I just want enough to kind of bring everything together. Um, you got to remember these are raw vegetables, so I'm adding salt to the raw vegetables, and it's gonna pull out some of the moisture, and it's gonna kind of make its own little liquid as well. Um, so I don't want to go crazy. So I'm going to mix this all up and then I'm going to bring it all together and I'll show you what's going on. I can smell the faro over there. Tompkins, you use yeah. three items that are normally or that used to be garnishes. So you used curly parsley, mint and kale. All three of those items used to be right? so relegated the, to garnishes. Yeah. So until the like, uh, like, like pretty recently, like in the 1980s on a buffet when you were a kid, like you go to the thing, like kale was lining the buffet with yeah. all that was like this vegetable, like it never dies. It's like, I know it just sits there forever. <laughs> it's like, they just like, do they, the buffet guys are like, should we change that? They're like, nah, it'll, it'll just, it'll be good till Saturday. It's Tuesday now. It's like, it's crazy to me. And that's why I love this recipe too, because kale is, it's not like, not everybody enjoys kale. So this is just another yeah. fun way to, you know, introduce kale. Exactly. So I don't know if you can see the top, I'll move my big noggin out of the way. You can see like, it's this beautiful kind of, so this plate's gonna be very dynamic. Ooh, Tammy the, has a uh, question. Should the farro yes. salad be served room temp or cold? So I... Uh, That's a good question. I think you should take that question because you we've done this so many times, the, the different farro salads. I like it cold to room temp, um, but I know we've done, you've done a lot of them more cold, do you think? What would you say? Yeah, so cold? I actually like grain salads like that to be room temp. I, I bet it would I also be amazing, um, a little bit warm, but like as a side dish with, you know. I have when my it's, gloves on. Uh -huh. When it's room Very temp, good. you get um, a lot of those flavors come out, right? So like the flavors of the, um, the crushed red pepper, the, the kale, the lemon, all those things. So if we're meal planning, as far as storage, how can we prepare this? Like if we want to use it more, more than one dish? Um, I would eat this now and then I would pack <laughs> this up tomorrow and take it for lunch because the longer this sits 
everything is going to kind of blend and mold together here. All right. Let me do this. Let's plate up. Let me move our, actually, no, let me chop my, let me chop my basil here first. Hold, hold. You know what? I'm going to tear the basil. I'm going to do that. We're going to do it. We're going to do it sexy Italian. We're going to do a little, little, little torn basil instead of chopping the basil. I don't want to bruise it. Um, and that's the biggest thing too is between bruising, you can, uh, you don't want to go crazy chopping herbs into it because you will pummel them. Like I think I've done this before, but I'll do it again with you guys. The, um, when you have a, uh, herbs, you start to chop them, they'll automatically start to turn color. So if I take the basil, which is a pretty, pretty little leaf of basil, and I start doing this to it, see all that color I just took out of it? See, like it starts to kind of weep and get whatever. So the more you chop it, the more it's going to kind of start to, you know, go down and degrade and I would say get a uh, much more wet. And so I, I just like to tear it. So I'm just going to do a little fresh torn. I'll wait till I get the bowl up here. All right, let me do this. I have our farro. Kelly has a good question about herbs. How long yes. will dill last in the fridge or herbs for that matter? They're all, I feel like uh, basil's probably the quickest to start turning colors on you. So it'll turn pretty quickly. It's temperamental, um, yeah. It's very temperamental, yeah. It's, um, I, I think dill tends to be a little hardier. Like dill, rosemary, thyme start to be a little bit hardier. Um, they do, I feel like they do a little bit better. Um, but I think it's just keep them in a cool, keep them in a cool place in your fridge. Um, one of the best ways to do it is just how I stored mine, a little bit of water in the bottom of a container and just, just put them in there and let them sit up. That way they'll kind of, they'll stay cool, but they won't, uh, they don't have to be completely you know, it won't go completely dry on you. So I'm gonna add a little bit of our farro here. So I made a bunch of farro. I'm gonna take some of that of home with me tonight. All right, so the kale ash is gonna go in here. We're almost done, oh, there you go. See that, see that pop of smoke come out of there? What? All right, so that's what we want. So I obliterated the kale. So that's still within the hour. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna take this guy. I'm gonna throw this together here. This is gonna go right in because I'm going to toss everything together. So all that kale ash is going to go in there and you're going to watch before your very eyes it's going to kind of almost disintegrate and become a delicious flavoring agent for this right here. That's going to get out of the way. I've got our salad. So the basil, again, a little torn fresh basil. So Anne I said that basil. she super caramelized her kale. Um, I'm glad to know that she's cooking along with us and that she set off I her smoke it. alarm. Yes, and I just I, imagined her I would have waving it, <laughs> like You're waving a broom in front of it. But she said her <laughs> kale looks just like chef. So I'm yes, super happy to hear I'm that. I'm telling man. you, stick with me. We're going to do it more and more. All right. You can add as much basil. I, I freaking love basil. So I'd add the whole, I'd add that whole box to be totally happy. All right. So we have our pork. I've got my dried cherries. Now, if you don't like dried cherries, I'd I don't blame you. You're, you're totally fine. If you want to leave them off, you can. I love smoked almonds in this though. The smoked almonds, again, we talked about texture. It's going to be a little bit of a crunch to it. So we talked about this earlier um, yeah. when you were talking about bacon, right? Yes. And you're talking about like, what would you use like in place of bacon or whatever. Sometimes like you want that smoky, crunchy thing and smoked almonds are really good for that. Yeah. They like, they add that element of that and also, it's like memory sensation. Yes. Yep. Memory sensation. So it has that like same texture, same taste. So it's it's kind of a way to like trick your mind almost. Yeah. I love memory that. Memory sensation. I feel the same way about Is that what you called peas. it? I love that. <laughs> oh yeah. Sugar snap peas are my favorite because of the crunch. Yeah. And so it gives me the same satisfaction as maybe something like a chip or yeah. you know, something like that. So All right. it's just so Rob and Jay, can you see that with the camera? Can you see the uh you see our, so you see how that became like part of the ash that's in there, which is amazing. I see one little seed, get that guy out of there. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. And I also love that we're doing that because um, Chef Charlotte talked about food synergy the last time. And so yep. lemons have absorbic acid, vitamin C, it helps absorb some of the iron that's in our dish. So Again, just getting more oxygen into our red blood cells, giving us more energy. So again, the food's energy here is just really amazing. I love it. Naturally. Love it. Yes. All right. Let's plate this up. Here we go. All right. This is a different kind of center of the plate now. Like we've got a different than the uh, myplate.gov. So a little bit of our farro salad. Those cherries in there. I'm going to do a little bit of this. I'm going to do this with my bad hands. All right. <laughs> I love that. All right. Here we go. A little bit of our beautiful salad here. I'm just gonna make a little tuft. A I always wanna build our plating so there's so it has tuft. some height to it. A little bit of tuft on Look it. Look how tuft. pretty that is. This is like crazy mundo, right? All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna do this guy. I'm gonna go back to our cutting board over here. 
flip this guy over. You know what would be really bad right now? If I dropped it in the final seconds of this and I'm like, wah, wah, wah. All right, so I'm gonna cut this. So I can pull the, uh, the strings off here. Remember our truss? I'm just gonna give it a little poke with my knife. You wanna use scissors, also a great idea as I go through this into the flesh of my hand, and that'll, that'll, be, that'll be how we cut out for the evening. What did we talk about? Sharp knives. Sharp knives save lives. No? Is that not it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna cut up our pork here. A little bit of pork on the plate. Move my string here. It's a little bit of, what's our portion size again? What's the, uh, Three what's ounces. the size? Three ounces. The size of your Ish. palm, you said? Oh, well then we're good then, because yeah. my palm's a little bigger than okay, you well. know, well, nutrition else's is palm. very individualized, so at, you know, we would definitely <laughs> recommend if you you know looking for more recommendations to visit with our dietitians because they'll be able to create recommendations that are, you know, individualized to your needs. All right, so what do we think? Does that work? You see our, our sky cam rolling yes. on that? You got a little oh sorry, Rob. <laughs> I was like trying to get up like da 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 to get it moving, moving target. All right, there you go. So that's super simple, super easy. Guys, thank you so much. Um, Andy, thank you so much for being Andy, here. Andy, thank, no, you, thank for you for being for here. Having, having thank you for being the voice of reason <laughs> to an otherwise chaotic. <laughs> Charlotte, thank you as always. Uh, guys, you can always go back and watch uh, other episodes. You can watch this episode again. You can cook along uh, with me and Charlotte. Uh, you can pause it anytime. We'll be your sous chefs. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, youtube.heb, and check all the other videos out. And otherwise, uh, you can check out our website, heb.com slash classes for more classes. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.